TII Technical Education Systems, Teaching Technology for Tomorrow. Okay, in this video what I'd like to show you is how to set up a very simple subroutine. And Siemens makes this process very easy to do. So this is how you actually do it. So I have set up a very basic program. Basically, left green push button, left green light comes on. Okay? And if you haven't watched any of my previous videos, I show you how to set up tags. Just go back and watch my previous videos, and uh, they're all there. So what we want to do when we're creating a subroutine, which is such a useful feature in all PLCs, and good PLC programmers really know how to take advantage of subroutines, is basically what you do. You come over to uh, your project tree, and under your program box, where your main program is, your OB1 is, what you do is you're going to click on Add a New Block. And what this will do is this will ask you, what type of block do you want to create? Do you want to take a ladder program? Do you want it to be a function block, a data block, an organization block, whatever it is? Okay? So what we're going to call this is just the sub, and get what's called sub. All right? And this is what language do you want? Ladder, function block. Okay? So we're going to just keep it at ladder. All right? And we're going to come over here and select OK. And now that subroutine is right here. And it's blank. So what we're going to do is we're going to just throw a very simple program in here. We'll put the left yellow push button on the TII Technical Education Systems PLC and HMI trainer in there. And we will put the right green light in here. Okay? Now this is in your subroutine. If you have a subroutine, that has to be somehow associated with your main routine. It can either be something that is always on or something that is only activated when an action happens. What do I mean by that? Well, you'll notice here in Network 2, I have a blank line. So if I want the subroutine to only be scanned when my right green latching push button is activated, this is how you add the subroutine in. You select FC1, your sub FC1, and you bring it down to our network 2. And that's all you do. It's that simple to connect your subroutine to the subroutine you've created. It really is very simplistic. So now what that means is this subroutine be scanned when this is activated. And this can be activated by the right latching push button. Now, what we want to do is we'll go ahead and download this and I'll show you how this works. So now that it's downloaded, let's go ahead and turn our monitor function on. And as you can see, I can activate the left green push button and my green light activates. Okay? If I activate my yellow push button, as shown in my subroutine, nothing's happening. Okay? my right green light is not activating. Okay, so let's go back over to our main routine, and this time let's activate our latching green push button. Okay, now my that subroutine, if you're coming from the Allen Bradley world, called the jump to subroutine is activated. Notice that my network one still operates. My green push button is activating my green light. But if I come over to my subroutine, notice that it is activated now. It's green and there's a blue line showing that there's no logical continuity. Let's activate this left yellow push button. And my right green push button turns on. Okay? If I deactivate my subroutine instruction, it's not going to work. If I activate it, it does work. All right. So now, here's one of the downfalls of subroutines that you have to be aware of. Notice that my light is on even though I'm not pushing the button, and it's still showing logical continuity. The reason is is that the light was on when I deactivated the subroutine. Okay. So if I act, if I activate the if I deactivate the subroutine, then it turns off. It's not going to work. I activate it. It operates fine, but if the output is on, 
When I deactivate the subroutine, there is no way to turn it off. So you have to be aware of that if you're going to have a subroutine that is going to be activated and deactivated by an input. You have to make sure that you can turn everything off that needs to be off before that subroutine is deactivated. Okay? Now, the last thing that I want to show you here, and I'm going to take this offline, is your subroutine does not have to have an input. Okay? I can delete this, and then this subroutine will always scan. All right? My subroutine, will I can always activate and deactivate it. This is very common in programming, where people will break up portions of a machine and put them into subroutines so they're easy to diagnose if something goes wrong, and they're easier to understand. And this is how, um, I'll go ahead and download this, and I'll show you. Now, I've downloaded both, and I've actually split the screen here, which is a really useful function if you're... Um, operating in subroutines. So notice that this is logically true. So now, no matter what I do, this will activate. Okay, the subroutine, there's no way to turn that off. And sometimes that is a very useful function. There are many subroutines that are programmed with no input at all. So they're always being scanned. Okay, I hope uh, this video helped uh, you with your understanding of how to input subroutines. Thanks for watching.